In this video, we're going to find some Taylor series for the function uh, sine of x. Uh, and we're going to start off with the Maclaurin series, so sine of x centered at x equals 0, the Maclaurin series. Now, we saw in the previous video in this series, the Maclaurin series, and, 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 and for a, a, well, we saw a couple Taylor series for the function e to the x, the natural exponential. And the natural exponential has the great fact that if you take the nth derivative, of e to the x, you always end up with e to the x as well. Its higher derivatives are predictable. Now, sine is actually a great alternative here. Uh, let's take f of x this time to be sine of x. This is a great function to go to next because sine of x also has some predictable derivatives, right? Uh, notice the following. If we take the first derivative of sine, you end up with cosine of x. If you take the second derivative, you're going to end up with negative sine. If you take the third derivative, you're going to end up with negative cosine. And then when you take the fourth derivative of sine, uh, the derivative of negative cosine is actually going to be a sine. And now you can see that this thing loops back to where it started with. And so the derivatives of the sine function are cyclic. That is, it goes in a cycle. Every four derivatives, you'll go back through the same loop. Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. And because of that, because of that cyclic nature, we can predict what's going to happen as we go through higher powers here. And so notice if we start plugging in x, or uh, we plug in x equals zero here for our center. Well, f of zero is sine of zero, and sine of zero is zero. Uh, then we plug in to the first derivative. F prime of zero would be cosine of zero, and cosine of zero is one. Uh, then the next one, the second derivative, we're gonna get the second derivative of zero is gonna be negative sine of zero, which is still zero. And then the next one, the third derivative, evaluate zero, you're gonna get negative, kind of, negative cosine of zero, cosine of zero is one, and so you get negative one. And so then when you go to the fourth derivative and evaluate this at zero, you'll get back zero. And again, this cyclic nature just repeats itself. You'll get, you'll, the, the coefficients here are always going to look like zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one. It's just going to repeat itself over and over and over and over again. And therefore, the Maclaurin series for sine will look like the sum as n ranges from zero to infinity. The general formula, right, is the nth derivative evaluated at your center. We're gonna plug in the number zero right here. Divide this by n factorial. Don't forget the n factorial. And then times that by x to the n. Now, what's going on here is gonna be the following idea. If we write this in expanded form, if we write this in expanded form, well, uh, like we see right here, f of zero is equal to zero. And therefore, the, the, the constant term is going to look like 0 over 0 factorial. Uh, then the next one, we're going to get plus 1 over 1 factorial times x. Then the next one, we're going to get 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. For the next one, we're actually going to get minus 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed. That's one complete cycle. I'm going to put a second cycle just to be very clear what's going on here. Next, we'll get 0 over 4 factorial times x to the 4th plus 1 over 5 factorial times x to the 5th plus 0 over 6 factorial times x to the 6th. And then finally, we're going to get minus 1 over 7 factorial times x to the 7th. And then the pattern again repeats itself over and over and over again. Uh, we see one cycle of 4 right here. We see another cycle of 4 right here. And then it'll just repeat itself over and over and over and over again. Now, whenever there was a coefficient of zero, you actually don't need that term because uh, it's just going to vanish. And so you see that the zeros occur, well, at zero, at x equal x squared, at x to the fourth, x to the sixth, the next one will be at x to the eighth, etc. These things zero out at even powers of x. All the even powers of x, they're gone. When we look at odd powers of x, those things that survive, you'll notice that it goes positive, negative, positive, and, oh, that was a zero there, sorry. Uh, here's the positive, and then the next one's a negative. And it'll continue to do that, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Only the even powers of x, oh, sorry, only the odd powers of x seem to survive. And we get this alternating sum. So it's going to look like 
x over 1 factorial. Then we're going to get minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Then we're going to get x to the 5th over 5 factorial. Then we're going to get minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. The next term that doesn't vanish would be x to the 9th over 9 factorial. Then minus x to the 11th over 11 factorial. And this continue, continues on and on and on. So one way of trying to find a closed formula for this, because this right here does give us um, the, tail, the Maclaurin series, but we can simplify this in the following way. This becomes the same thing as the sum as n equals 0 to infinity. It's an alternating sum, so we're going to have to have a factor of negative 1. We're going to have a power of x, and then there's going to be a factorial in the denominator. Now, the factorial in the denominator will just be the same degree as the power of x right there. And as we have only odd powers, we're going to make the powers be 2n plus 1. So notice when you choose n to be 0, you're going to get 0 plus 1, which is 1. When n equals 1, you get 2 plus 1, which is 3. When n equals 2, you get 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. So the sequence 2n plus 1 will grab all of the odd numbers. So we get x to the 2n plus 1, and then we have 2n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. And this is an alternating sequence. It starts off positive, negative, positive, negative. So we're going to get negative 1 to the n. And therefore, we've now discovered the Maclaurin series for sine of x. And that's pretty cool. Um, it, it's it's kind of like e to the x's because you have powers of x over n factorials. Uh, but you don't. You only have the odd powers. You don't have any of the even powers, and it's an alternating sum. So those are some important differences there. And I want to. I want to point out to you that for sine here, its Maclaurin series only involves the odd powers, which is kind of curious because sine is an odd function, isn't it? Right. Sine has the property that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. This is what we call an odd function. Uh, we get this because when you take like an odd power negative x cubed is the same thing as negative x cubed. And so sine kind of acts in this regard as an odd monomial. And so what a coinkidink that the powers of x are odd for an odd function. That's not a coinkidink, right? Uh, that's actually something we'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, what I want to do for the, for the rest of this video, though, is actually kind of do this exercise again uh, for sign so we want to find a taylor series but this time let's center it at pi thirds um, because of some of the details we did on the previous slide we can kind of speed this process up a little bit we know what the derivatives of sine are going to look like we need to look at the zeroth derivative and evaluate that at pi thirds uh, that's going to be sine of pi thirds which remembering the values from your unit circle that's going to be root three over two if you do the first derivative of pi thirds remember that's going to be cosine of pi thirds uh, and that's when you get one half. If we do the second derivative at pi thirds, remember the second derivative here is going to be negative sine. We evaluate this at pi thirds, and therefore we get negative root three over two. And then finally, if you do the fourth derivative, uh, no, sorry, we're on the third derivative right now. The third derivative of sine was negative cosine. We evaluate that at pi thirds, and that gives us then a negative one half. And so this one's a little bit more difficult to express because we don't have as much simplification as we did before. But um, from what we saw before, you take the sum as from in, where n ranges from 0 to infinity, you're going to get the nth derivative evaluated at pi thirds. This sits above the n factorial. Don't forget the n factorial. You're also going to get x minus pi thirds uh, to the n. That's going to show up. And so if we write this out in expanded form, this will look like the root 3 over 2 plus one half times x minus pi thirds. Then you're gonna get, um, I guess the next one's minus root three over two times x minus pi thirds squared minus one half times x minus pi thirds uh, cubed. And then this pattern will just repeat itself over and over and over again at that point. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the n factorial, didn't I? I told you not to do it and then I did it myself. Um, so actually, they don't start picking up until the second term because 0 factorial and 1 factorial both are uh, 1. So you're going to get a 2 times 2 right there. You're going to get a 6 times 2 right there. So if you prefer, you could write that as a 4. You could write this as a 12, again, if you want to, or you can leave it kind of factored. 
And so this gives us the Taylor series. If you want a little bit more compact formula, what you can do is you can kind of break up the even terms together, and you can then com you can combine the odd terms together uh, because the evens and odds kind of behave differently for, for sine here. And so if you want to gather all the even stuff together, you would get this sum where n ranges from zero to infinity. We're going to get x minus pi thirds to the two n. So we're only grabbing the even powers there. And in that situation, all of the evens always have a root three over two in front of it. So you get the square root of three times two times two n factorial. But it's also an alternating sum. It's going to go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So you get this negative one to the n. This only will describe the even terms. We're only grabbing even powers of x, two to the n. Um, if you did that with the odd terms, n equals zero to infinity. Um, that one also is going to be alternating negative one to the n. Uh, you don't get a square root of three this time. Uh, but you are going to get a 2 in the bottom times, since these are now odd, you're going to get 2, 2n two plus 1 factorial. And that's going to be multiplied by uh, this x minus pi thirds. And this will go to the 2n plus 1 power. And so in this situation, we're just grabbing the odd terms in this sum. And so this one's a little bit more messy than sine was, but well, the, the Maclaurin series for sine, I should mention, and that's generally what's going to happen. The Maclaurin series is generally much cleaner uh, as a power series than these ones centered somewhere else. And that's one of the reasons why we really like uh, the Maclaurin series so much. Now, I should mention that in both of these examples, we didn't actually say it. What would be the radius of convergence in this situation, right? What's the radius of convergence for this one right here? And so this one gets a little bit gets a little bit trickier uh, because we have to look at the consecutive terms right here. Uh, but what's going to happen? What happens if you try to do the ratio test? You take a n plus one over a n, right? Uh, in this situation, again, things get a little bit more funky because you're going to get f of n plus one. Um, well, I, I guess we only have to worry about the odd, we only have to worry about the odd positions here. Um, and so because of that, because all the even ones just, just disappear. And so you're going to end up with something like negative one to the n plus one times x to the two n plus three. I replaced the n with n plus one distributed. And then you have this two n plus three factorial down here. And then if you take one over a to the n, you end up with this, uh, 2n plus 1 factorial over the denominator, you get negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1. Uh, that didn't turn out very well, 2n plus 1. Uh, you have to be a little bit more careful as you simplify this. The negative ones you can just ignore since they're inside absolute values. When you cancel out the powers of x, you are going to take away a 2n plus 1, and that'll leave actually an x squared behind. And the same similar things happen right here. When you cancel out this, you're going to end up with a 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3, and a 2n plus 2, like so. And so you end up with the absolute value of x squared over 2n plus 3 and 2n plus 1. But much like we did with the natural exponential, as, as n goes to infinity, uh, there's no choice of x for which the square on top can compensate for this. Because uh, we're going to go off towards the absolute value of x squared over infinity. And there's no real value that can compete with dividing by infinity. There. This will go off to zero. You're, and therefore, the limit of the ratios is always one, which tells us that then the radius of convergence will be infinity as well. So we see that this McLaurin series, and also for the Taylor series, centered at pi thirds, same calculation can be done there. We see that this, this Taylor series and this McLaurin series will also have a radius of convergence equal to infinity, just like the natural exponential.